You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Sonic Summer Stock Playhouse. Good evening, Maurice. Lovely crowd tonight. Evening, Mr. Old. Gorgeous crowd. I'm glad we have a little time in the lobby this week, because Jack's been busily getting the Mutual Audio Network station up and running, and MadCon is going smoothly. Remember to get your tickets. It's just one year away now, July 2020. Get your tickets and find out more at mad-con.com. Yes, now that we're just a year away, the time is ever so important to get your spot in the world's first audio drama convention in the July of 2020. Once there, you'll see so many things with some of your favorite artists in the medium today. Oh, and um, there's the signal, so uh, better get off to my seat. Oh, such comfortable plush seating and raked upwards to give the audience such fantastic views. Tonight, it's John Bell again arriving on the stage, this time with a classic from the arch dramatist himself, Arch Obler, from the series Lights Out. John presents The Ugliest Man in the World, an experimental and sentimental play inspired by Boris Karloff's typecasted horror roles in which... Ah, yes, but we'll uh, see for ourselves as the curtain rises as Mr. John Bell himself comes out to greet the audience. With your indulgence, a short preface. In the mid-1930s, Arch Obler had begun a successful career as a writer of imaginative horror and fantasy, including his now classic tales for Lights Out. In 1939, hoping to launch a radio series of experimental idea plays, Arch Obler recorded an audition record of his play, The Ugliest Man in the World, which he presented to NBC. The network felt that Obler's show would make a good rival against CBS's successful shows, so they hired him, and the result was the series called Arch Obler Plays. In the spirit of that audition record, I hereby submit this one-man performance of The Ugliest Man in the World. I'll be waiting to hear from NBC. The scene, a room in semi-darkness. At a table sits a man, tall, gaunt, his heavy face lit occasionally by a random beam of light reflecting off the polished barrel of a revolver. This is Paul Martin. As the revolver twists in his nervous fingers, the thoughts in his mind twist and turn, twist and turn. Gun in my hand, gun in my hand, in all my life I never had a gun in my hand. Smooth gun, hard gun, cold gun in my hand, bullet won't be cold, warm bullet, hot bullet, burning hot, hot as the blood, no, can't think of that, lift the muzzle of the gun up, hole as black as where I'm going to turn the muzzle up and press the trigger, trigger cold against my finger, cold as death, but life is colder, rhythm to that. Poet dies with final rhythm. Poet dies who never wrote a poem. Headline for the tabloids. Poet dies with final rhythm. Ugliest man in the world. A suicide. Poet dies with final rhythm. Ugliest man in the world. A suicide. Poet dies in final rhythm. Ugliest man in the world. A suicide. Poet dies in final rhythm. Ugliest man. Oh, no, stop! Stop! Ugliest man in the world. All right, I'll think the thing for the last time. Tear the words around in my head over and over the way they've torn for 30 years. Ugliest man in the world. 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 In the world. Press the trigger. Stop it. Press the trigger. No, no. I can't got to wait. 
Wait, for what? For nothing, nothing if I press the trigger. Nothing if I press the trigger. Nothing if I wait, press the trigger. No! My chance. Yes, my chance to think, think it all out, but clearly for the first time in my life how it started, why it's ending this way. Think it all out, clearly, from the very start. Then press the trigger. School today, Paul. There's a start. First day of school. How old was I? Nine or ten. She kept me home, away from the others. I didn't know why. Until that day she said, School today, Paul. I said, All right, Mother. Before the teacher could answer, Mother hurried out of the room and left me there. The teacher's eyes were on me, small eyes, worried eyes, thin mouth open, turned to the faces lifting attention. below her. Your attention, children. I, I, I want you to meet a new classmate. His name is uh, Paul Martin. For a moment, not a sound. Row on row of children looking up at me, staring up at me, gaping up at me, and then <laughs> one of them started laughing. <laughs> another laughing, another, and another laughing, laughing. I stood there, a little boy looking down at their twisting mouths, my ears filled with the sound of them making fun of me. I knew that, but why? Why? Ugliest boy, boy in the world. In the world. Ugliest boy in the world. That's why you kept me away from children, Mother. Kept me away until you didn't dare to any longer. Oh, Mother, Mother, before you let others see me, why didn't you close your hands around my neck, put a knife in my heart, drown me, bury me, put me away where eyes couldn't see me? <laughs> But you didn't. So this was my boyhood. Tears. Tears without end. A boyhood of tears. A boyhood of tears. Took me out of school. Kept me away from all the others. What good was it? I knew. I knew. There wasn't a mirror in the house. There wasn't a mirror in the house. You have committed your beloved to the keeping of the Mother Earth, which bears us all. Cherish the memory of her words and deeds and character. Good night, my boy. Alone, so quiet in the house, I sat down, so quiet. And then suddenly, as if the clock were talking to me, yes, I remember, look at yourself, look at yourself, look at, yes, look at myself. That's what I'll do. Never had I looked at myself, never had seen what I looked like. I hadn't dared. I hadn't wanted to, but now I had to know, had to, had to. A mirror. Had to find a mirror. Surely Mother had kept one mirror somewhere. Drawer after drawer. A mirror. Certainly there was a mirror. Mother gone. I was alone. A life to make my face. Perhaps it wasn't a mirror. Yes, there was one wrapped and hidden where she thought I'd never find it. Tore the paper off. I kept my eyes shut until the glass was clear. And then I looked. Ah, ah, ah. My face. Can I bear the memory of my face? Can I think of it even now, gun in hand? Yes, I will. I will. What did I see? What is my face? A brow? No brow, a thing that sloped away sharply, quickly, like a peaked roof half fallen in. Nose, a thick wad of ugly flesh protruding out between two close-set eyes. My eyes, my eyes, mother of God, my eyes. Two tiny red-rimmed, green-flecked 
globes that stood far out beyond the lids and twinkled like a fat, round pig's. My eyes, that was why they laughed at me. My eyes. Ugliest man, ugliest man in the world. Yes, I was that. No longer a boy. Ugliest man in the world. Not even tears could help me now. The world outside. At last I had to go out into it. Make a living. Get a job. Job? You want a job? Job. Work for me? <laughs> job. You think I'm working a circus sideshow here? Job. Get out. Circus sideshow. Get out. Circus sideshow. Get out. Circus sideshow. 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 Get up, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. The one and only amazing natural oddities from the four corners of the earth. Step up, step up, room for everybody. Wasn't bad there. No. What I said, that's what I said. Come on, ladies and gents, that's what I said. The ugliest man in the world, only a dime, one tenth of a dollar. Something to talk about, something to tell your children and your grandchildren when you get home. You saw the ugliest man in the world. That's it. Step closer, closer, closer. Didn't mind. After a while, faces looking up at me again, staring, whispering, getting their dimes worth. Spieler talking, faces staring, whispers, snick. Didn't mind. Why should I? I could get away from them. Yes, stand there in the noise and laughter and leave them far behind. Leave the smell of them and the noise of them and the twisting faces of them. Shut my eyes and leave them quickly. Quickly! He's repulsive. He's the thing nightmares are made of. If you are faint of heart, do not enter to see the ugliest man in the world. I'd be in a field, sun-drenched, face to the sky, the warm sun touching me, soft grass cushioning me, my arm outstretched, all around me such peace and loveliness. I'd lie there so happy, and then a breeze touching my face, and a small white cloud in the sky, then another, and all at once the clouds were like a woman's face looking down at me. A woman. A woman. Hello, big fella. Oh, uh, hello. How of the day, huh? Yes. So I give you a big play. I mean the locals, don't they? Yes. Me, I'm with Sammy Horton. You know, the grind show. I, I... I ain't one of the strippers, you understand? I do a high-class dance, you know, semi-classical. <sighs> sure been a long, hot day, ain't it? It, it has... Nice walking out in the dark. I mean, yeah, it's kind of different than on the midway. Yeah, nice in the dark. Oh. There was a woman. Let's stop walking. All right. Ah, it's nice, ain't it? Do you like the moon? Moon? Sure, sure. You've been working in tent shows long, big fella. So complete, the moon. Boy, you sure pack them in. I heard you sell more pictures than anybody else in the show. Dimes sure add up, don't they? I... I don't think of money very much. Oh, me? I don't either. I just like people, or I don't. Who cares what they got? It's... it's very kind of you. Kind? What do you mean? You... me? Yeah? Your face. Did you ever look down from the 
clouds. <laughs> you mean, have I ever been high? <laughs> I'm high right now. I like the dark, big fella. There was a woman talking. They were talking. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, Sam. What do you take me for, a chump? Well, what do you think? His face makes me sick just to look at him. He's got a pocket full of dough. <laughs> My face in the clouds. <laughs> That's good, eh, Sam? So I keep looking up, and I don't have to see his mug. So we get along fine. And last week, so last week, I got a telegram from my mama. <laughs> Poor mama and the mortgage. And yesterday, while he was looking at me up in the clouds, I got another handful of bucks. And maybe in a couple of weeks, I... You? All right, so you heard. So what? What are you staring at? I don't like your face. You heard me. I don't like your face. I gave you... You gave me a couple of laughs. That's all a face like yours is good for. For the laughs. Love. Love? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Love. Do you think any woman could love a mug like yours? It's not a face. It's a mug. A puss. A pan. Yeah, you hang it up in the dark and scare kids with it for Halloween. Go on, beat it. Get out of here. No more walks with me, big fella. I got a belly full of laughs and I... Hey, what are you... No, stay away from me. Don't. I... Ah, go on, beat it. Get out. Yeah, get out as far as I could get out. Any place, anywhere, 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 any place, any place, get away, get away, get away, get away. It's not a face, it's a mug, a pan, a puss. <laughs> get away. Yeah, got away. Good and far away. Fields, grain. A farm. They didn't care what kind of face, just work hard. Work, 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 hour after hour. Sweat salt on my lips. Work, keep working. You don't think when you work, hour after hour, day after day. The sun over the fields frying your brain. And I couldn't think. I couldn't think. It was good. I couldn't think. But I'm thinking now. Gun in my hand. Stop that thinking. Gun in my hand. No. Got to think out my life. Think it out clearly. Think of that day. She waved at me. Was working. Bent over. Sun hot on my back. Green thick around me, filling the world, covering, hiding me. I straightened up, something moving through the grain on the road. Climbing the hill so far away, could hardly tell just what it was, shaded my eyes from the sun. I saw a woman on horseback. No, so small, must be a girl. I saw her arm wave at me. I dropped in the grain. I hid. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. The next day, again, standing in the grain, a tiny figure on horseback waved at me. I dropped in the grain again. No, no more. Just the sky and the grain and the work was all I wanted. The next day, and the next, a girl on horse, back riding far off there on the road, waving at me in the grain, waving at me day after day. And one day I, I didn't drop in the grain. I stood, 
I waved back at her, waving at me, because she couldn't see me, see my face, puss, puss. Puss. Hey, <laughs> So she waved at me, and I waved back. And soon I was waiting for that moment in the day when she'd pass in the distance and her arm would lift toward me. I waited for that, just waited. Then I was thinking about her all the time. I had so much time to think in my loneliness. What did she look like? What did she look like? I... I don't remember how. In spite of myself, one day I was hiding in the grain at the edge of the road, waiting for her. Wanted to run, yet I stayed. Wanted to cover my eyes, yet I looked. Looked with eyes as big as all my loneliness. Horse knew I was there. She didn't. She started singing a little song as she passed. A song without meaning, warm as the sun. And I saw, I saw her face as lovely as mine was ugly. Young, lovely, young, lovely. The words tumbled over and over in my head as I watched her go by, young and lovely. I began to see her face everywhere in the grain, in the sky, and at night, in the dark. Ugliest man in the world. Thinking of the loveliest face in the world. I tried to stop, but I couldn't. The loneliness in me was a pain I couldn't endure any more. Again and again I hid in the grain and watched her go by me. Just a quick moment, and then she was gone, and I was left in the loneliness again. But I couldn't meet her. I knew that one look at my face and she'd scream, she'd run, yes, even laugh. Laugh, laugh, and if she laughed, I knew my world would end, crack in the laughter and crush me under. If she couldn't see my face, yes, if she were blind, read a book like that somewhere, a woman never saw the man she loved, if she couldn't see me, only know me as I am, my, my voice, thoughts, my dreams, ambitions, if she couldn't see. Dangerous dreams, daydreams that brought me to a gun in my hand. But I had nothing, so I had dreams of her, blind, not knowing my face, not knowing and her face close to mine and her lips. I said it Yes, I said it over and over again, Mother in heaven, if she were only blind, if she were only blind. Wish, Father, to the deed, that day working in the grain, looked up, she was riding by, so early, why so early, her little hand waving at me, then the rush of an auto. I ran, the grain tearing at me holding me back. In a moment, she was in my arms. Help me. Please help me. I can't see. I can't see. Can't see. I dreamed it, prayed, and now I can't see. What have I done? What have I done? Concussion. Nerve block. No, I, I had nothing to do with it. Just a thought. I I had only thought. But now she couldn't see me as I was. Couldn't see me. You've been very kind to me, Mr. Martin. Paul. Music. Everlasting music in my ears. 
come here every day, won't you? It's so good having you to talk to. You've made these wonderful days, Paul. Music. Everlasting music. Her voice. Being with her. Knowing her. And she. You've such a good mind, Paul. The best I've ever known. I needed a mind like yours. I'm laughing, Paul. Because you've made me happy again. You, Paul, and I, I bless you for it. Happy days, endless days, quick silver days. Then, the day. Paul, I've been waiting for you. I wanted to be here sooner, but the grain... The grain. Is it very tall and bold now, Paul? Very Remember how the grain used to keep us apart? Before I even knew you, I'd wave, and the grain was between us, and I never knew you. Is knowing me important? Paul! Do you know me now? You're the only one I've wanted to be with me. Do you know me now? You know so little about me to ask me that. You're lovely. My family... Why I came to live out here alone... So very lovely. Paul, Paul, listen to me. I know you now better than I could if my eyes were open and twice as wise as they ever could have been. You're lovely. And so are you. You've never seen me. When people have talked together as much as you and I, every little hope and hurt, dream and plan... Don't they know more than if they looked at faces? And what do you look like, Paul? I... No, let me guess. I've sat here in the dark and seen your face so many times before me. My face? Yes. Let me tell you. It's a large, virile face. A face that matches up with all the strength of you. Strong, straight mouth, firm chin, skin brown yet soft. Straight nose that's not too small, yet not too large. And then your eyes. Eyes? Oh, yes, your eyes. I'll tell you about your eyes. They're large and dark and gentle. Gentle as the way of you, Paul. Well, how close was I to knowing you? Give me your and no, no, I don't want to touch your face. You... Later, yes, but not now, Paul. I want you to read me something. Read? Yes, so strange. We were talking about faces when I've had this book for you to read me. One of my favorites, of a man with courage. Look, do you know the book, Paul? Cyrano de... Yes, brave Cyrano de Bergerac. You've read the play, of course. I... I never have. Then I envy you. I wish I'd never read it, so that I could read, hear it all over again. Please read it for me. Start any place. Read it, Paul. Thou lovest her? Tell her, for I do surmise thou art a hero in her eyes. That was Labret, Cyrano's friend. Now, go on, read Cyrano's speech. Nay, shall I woo the loveliest maid in France. Look at me, friend, with my poor big devil of a nose. I dream, even I, of walking neath that beam, loving, beloved. As I dream, my soul expands, exults, but soars to fall. I see my profile shadowed on the wall. You read it with your heart, Paul. He was ugly, the rest of him was beauty, just his nose. Read Cyrano's lines, and I'll try to remember Roxanne's. She was the woman he loved, and he never dared to tell her of his love because of his ugliness. Read, Paul, the top of the page. Roxanne calls, Sister, oh, sister. Read, Paul. No, call no one here. Ere you come back, I should have gone away. I longed for harmony to end my day. I love you. Live. In fairy tales long since, the princess said that, 
and the ugly prince lost all his plainness in that sudden sun. But see, I finish as I was begun. I made your grief. I, I. You made my bliss. I lacked all woman's kindness. Even this, my mother found me ugly, and I had no sister. Lest they mock an ugly lad, I shunned all women. You became my friend. One soft gown brushed my path before the end. And then the moon comes out, and Labrette says, Thy other love. Cyrano loved the moon. Welcome, fair friend above. I loved you once, and twice I lose my love. I loved but once, and twice I lose my love. Paul, you cry? Cry? What is there to cry about? It's true. There's no reason to cry. Just a play. In life no man could be such a fool. Goodbye. Goodbye? No, no, don't leave me, Paul. I haven't had a chance to tell you. Tomorrow I go. You... My family. I'm strong enough to be moved now. Where? Paul, we've talked so much of anything and everything, but never of this. My eyes. An operation. I'll see again. That's why I didn't want to see your face with hands. I'll see you with my eyes, Paul. See you with my eyes. See you with my eyes. See again. See again. See what? A face to laugh at. Ugliest, ugliest man in the world. A face to jeer at. Puss. Puss. A face to shout at, but not to love, not to love. Never will I, so long as I am master, let beauty so divine meet such disaster. Ugliness mar perfection. <sighs> Cyrano, I read you a thousand times because she read you. The author gave you a paper nose, but... My ugliness is flesh and blood, flesh and blood, flesh and blood to see, to hate. She'll never see me, never, never lift the muzzle, press the trigger, trigger cold against my finger, cold as death, but life is colder, thoughts in my mind like a whirling circle. Ugliest man, ugliest man, in the world. ugliest man in the ugliest world. Man press the trigger, press the trigger, press the trigger. Paul? Who is it? Paul, uh, Paul, where's the light? You see. It's been weeks. I've been searching. Where's the light, Paul? Forget me. So dark. In your hand. What? Oh, Paul. I've wasted too much time thinking. Oh, my dearest. Forget me, I tell you. You knew me in the dark. Well, it's light for you, and I'm not meant for light. Forget me. I want you to know, in the light, your ugliness. My... Yes, Paul, I've known. First, when you cried with Cyrano. Then I asked the others, and they told me. But you don't know my face, a thing... A thing apart, as my blindness was apart from me. I love you. You love? Love you, yes. Yes, I love you. You don't know. But I will know. Turn on the light, Paul. Turn on the light. I love you. Live for me. In fairy tales, long since, the princess said that, and the ugly prince lost all his plainness in that sudden sun. Thank you and congratulations to John Bell's amazing performance with The Ugliest Man in the World. 
Join us next week as the Narada Radio Company returns with another grand Billy Wilder adapted film classic from Lux Radio Theatre. Until next week, for Jack Ward, all the crew here at the Playhouse and myself, I'm David Alt. Thank you and good night. And that's this week's performance for Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric Vicuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. The Playhouse theme was written and performed by Sharon B. Join us next week at the Playhouse for another classic performance. I'm your announcer, David Alt. Good night. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Hi, I'm Persephone Rose, executive producer for Postal Roach and the creator of Emperor Pigs. I'm a huge fan of audio drama. And if you're listening to this right now, I've got a sneaking suspicion you might be too. So make sure your headphones are plugged in tight because you're going to want to hear this. From July 24th through the 26th in 2020, producers, directors, composers, writers, actors, technicians, and fans of audio drama are gathering together for the world's first international modern audio drama convention in Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is going to be amazing. If you like panels, there's going to be panels. Workshops, they've got them. Studio sessions, swag events, live performances, and most importantly, all your favorite creators are going to be there. You can get all the details and purchase your tickets online at www.madcon.com. That's M-A-D hyphen C-O-N dot com. See you at MadCon.